I'm gonna need a calculator for today's show. This isn't even a calculator, it's a label maker. That's not gonna work. Here we are at our very first rental property. Brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around to the end of today's episode to learn how you can get two months free. Today we're talking about the math behind income property. Today we're gonna to go deep dive in the math that goes into owning an investment rental property. So get out your pen and take some notes. You might wanna get a real calculator. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor. And on this channel, we teach people how to get rich without quitting their day job, unless they want to. I retired at 40 years old from my day job thanks to passive cash flow from real estate investing. And I built this channel to help you do the very same thing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell notification dingus so you'll be notified when we publish a brand new video. Okay, let's get started. Understanding numbers on a rental property is everything. In fact, it might be the only thing, but you need to know your goals. So for most investors like myself, cash flow is most important. But for many millionaires, owning real estate as a tax shelter is far more important. So for me, I like both because I want a handsome cash flow with great tax benefits that help me pay virtually nothing in taxes. I'll we'll have more on that later. Now, I'm going to assume if you're watching a video like this that you've already watched, perhaps I hope anyway, one of my videos on finding great rental properties. That's step one in this process. Step two is this video and understanding the math. I'll put a link to that video in the description below and above. The first thing that I wanna do is use a quick back of the envelope math equation to see if this property is even in the ballpark and worth our time buying. I don't wanna waste a lot of time if I can eliminate the junk right away. So I always start with the 10% rule or some people call it the 1% rule depending on who you ask. But basically, you want to divide your annual income by the purchase price of that property. If it's greater than 10%, then it should be a solid investment. So let's show you a basic example here. So let's say I buy this new construction duplex for $350,000. Well, the cash flow is roughly $3,000 per month. So that's $36,000 a year in passive income from tenants. Now, I divide $36,000 by $350,000. That gives me... 0.1, 10%. So that's really nice investment there. And at this point, we're not even mentioning the tax benefits of this property, which will make that number even better, especially for new construction. So for now, we just wanna cut the wheat from the chaff, as they say. So if I were looking at this investment, that would definitely be one that I'd actually wanna spend some time on. Using the 10% rule helps us eliminate properties that are just a total waste of time. One of my mentors told me once to never get emotional about real estate. It's just four walls and a roof, he said. He said, fall in love with the numbers instead. So don't get emotional about the property that you pinned your hopes and dreams on. Don't try and get creative and try to massage the numbers. Just move on and find another house. What we really want is a home that has nice cash flow. Remember, cash flow is just your monthly rental income minus any expenses like maintenance, taxes, insurance, and property management. Now, I always wanna plan for 40% because unexpected things can come up. I recommend using a service like DealCheck if you're not a crazy spreadsheet wizard like my wife. Then DealCheck is for you. It will also help you understand your property's income, appreciation, and equity to make sure that you're always cash flow positive. We'll have a link below to DealCheck. Now, don't guess the value of your investment. Calculate it. An investment property is more than just monthly profit. You need to see the full picture. So part of that picture, first and foremost, is I wanna consider the potential rental income on this property. This should be very easy to do by comparing similarly priced and sized homes in your neighborhood. So for that new construction duplex example, well, we know that neighborhood is appreciating in value and the demand near the local university for housing is fantastic, and rents have continued to climb, and the other size properties are also renting at the same rate. So we know this house will rent for roughly $3,000 a month when both units are occupied. The same is true of the very first single family home I purchased. This three bedroom house was a bit older, not new construction, but I knew that if I upgraded it nicely in the neighborhood during the renovation phase, that there were gonna be other properties in that neighborhood renting for about $950 a month. 
So I also knew I could charge a little bit more for rent because I had a fenced in backyard. And so that way I could rent to a dog owner, for instance, and charge more monthly rent by allowing a pet in the property. Online tools are great, but so are local property managers. They'll know the going rate for a house on a particular street if they're doing their job well. Next up is repairs and maintenance. So how much will it cost you to get this house rent ready so a tenant has a great place to live? Do you have to replace the hot water heater, the furnace, the roof? All of these are costs that are gonna lower your ROI or your return on investment of this house. Another cost that I can't recommend highly enough is property management. The worst thing you can do is massage numbers by saving a few bucks and managing the property yourself. Don't do it, it's not worth it. You're trying to create passive income, you don't need to create another job for yourself. We always wanna build into our numbers the cost of hiring a property manager to place and screen tenants in that property and handle maintenance requests, et cetera. Most you know, property managers will charge between eight to 12% a month, so that comes out of the cash flow from the tenant. If the house is vacant, you don't pay the property manager. Also, it's important to note that every property I own is thousands of miles away from where I live because the best rental properties are not in your backyard. So you need a great manager handling the day-to-day -day of the property. Don't skimp on this. Next up is insurance. You'll wanna protect your investment. We use Arcana Insurance, we'll have a link below to that to save a boatload of money on your rental property insurance. We have all of our properties covered with them. You can pick the policy that works for you right from their website. No need to get on the phone and you'll be up and running in minutes getting the proper insurance on your rental property. Next up is property taxes. No matter how you slice it, the government will always get its money. And I know many investors that ignored property taxes when they were considering a deal. Don't do this. Don't make that mistake. Certain states like New Jersey could crush your investment because God, the property taxes are so stinking high there. Same is true of California and New York. So make sure you know that yearly property tax bill and add it into your math equation. Next up is utilities. You may have to carry the cost of some utilities on a property for a certain amount of time. On some of those multifamily properties, you may have to carry the cost of utilities, for instance, water and sewer, and then divvy it up and charge your tenants accordingly. But that math, that money is coming out of your pocket. So be careful and make sure you add in utilities to your equation. Next up is vacancy. Remember, if you have a mortgage on a property and their tenant is moved out for two months, Tenants not paying your mortgage. So you need to account for vacancies in your properties. At least planning on two months vacancy in a property is a smart move. Sometimes you have the holidays to deal with. If a tenant moves out, people don't like to move during Christmas time. Plan accordingly and make sure that vacancy number is in your math equation. And I mentioned mortgage payment earlier. Remember, if you have leverage, you are using the bank's money or someone else's money to pay for this property and you have to make a monthly mortgage payment, that is an expense. You need to count that into your equation. Yes, using other people's money is powerful. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. That's why we built leverage into all of the rental properties that we sell at Morris Invest so that there is financing available on properties. Why use all of your money when investing in real estate? You shouldn't. Use the bank's money, but you need to account for that mortgage payment every month. We don't want you foreclosing on a property after six months of no payment. Next up is HOA fees, you know, homeowners association fees. I've done a whole video on why I don't invest in homeowners association properties like condos. Well, you can go check that out. But the bottom line is that they're expensive and they can manipulate your investment at any time and decide we don't want you to rent this property anymore or we don't want you to use this property for Airbnb purposes anymore and you are out of luck. I don't want to be dictated to by a homeowners association. Plus, I don't want to pay $800 a month to some board, some old coots on a board deciding when I have to paint my walls. Anyway, but if you do have homeowners association fees, this is going to be a big chunk of your investment and you absolutely need to make sure that this is included in your equation for purchasing a rental property. Next up, tax deductions. These funds are used to pay for property taxes, repairs and maintenance on properties or a down payment for your next house. So while we're earning money each month on these rental properties, our tenant is paying down our mortgage for us, which is great, right? Increasing our equity in that home and that position. So ultimately increasing our net worth like we like to talk about. 
Also, unlike a primary residence where mortgage interest and property tax is deductible, everything listed above that we just talked about is tax deductible. Repairs, property management fees, mortgage interest insurance, etc. They're all deductible expenses. So the value of a rental property also can depreciate over time, 27.5 years. So you get additional tax benefits. And like we talked about with our new construction duplex as our example, you get additional tax depreciation because you're improving roads and sewer lines on the property. That's something that you don't get with a renovated property. New construction, ding, 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 extra tax benefits. The next thing I want you to consider is the renovation and repairs. I really want you to think about the ROI, the return on investment of these repairs. Are you gonna put $15,000 into that kitchen, which could really increase the rent value on that property? Will you make your money back as a return on investment by being able to charge a higher rent? You need to know these things before you start wasting money on ridiculous repairs for a neighborhood. Maybe your property doesn't require granite countertops in your neighborhood just yet. Maybe your neighborhood is still on Formica countertops and it would be an excessive expense at this stage. Now, as your property appreciates in value and other houses in the neighborhood start to put in granite countertops, that's something you could revisit a few years from now. Maybe granite's common and you have to put it in. Great. But are your numbers out of whack? Do you have to put on a new roof? Do you have to paint? Do you have to carpet new cabinets? Do you have to provide appliances? Do you have to put on granite countertops? Hot water heater, new furnace. When you start to run all of these numbers, make sure that the ROI is still there for you to have a great return on investment. So bottom line, let the math dictate your purchase here. Don't become emotional about real estate. Please let the numbers do the talking. I'm so excited to tell you about our sponsor for today's show, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Let's make 2020 the year that you learn something new, explore something new that you've been meaning to for so long. I mean, whether it's graphic design or using digital photography, they have amazing, amazing uh, classes that you can check out around digital photography. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project. They have classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. Level. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. I'm a huge fan of the business section. In the business section, you can find great, great classes like Make Creativity Your Career, Six Exercises to Create a Successful Side Project. Yeah, if you want to start your side hustle, it's a great opportunity. Classes on productivity, um, how to build brand from coming up with your purpose to launching your product. Amazing, amazing classes for you to check out at Skillshare. Now, you want to get two months free premium? You've got to check it out at the link below, you're going to get two months free just for checking out everything Skillshare has to offer. That way you can dive in and explore something new that speaks to you in the year 2020. Again, click the link below in the description to get two months free of your premium plan so you can check out and dive into other classes that speak to you. Thanks, Skillshare. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell notification dingus. So we can let you know when a new video publishes. We publish multiple times per week. We'll see you in the next video, everyone.